Hey guys, welcome and ting and ting and ting. And today we're going to watch the history of Serbia in 20 minutes, real quick and ting. You understand what I'm saying? A place I've been interested in. I've done videos on them before. I've done about six or so videos on Serbia. You understand what I mean? And then uh, uh, somebody from Romania told me that Serbia and Romania are like brothers. Yeah, you know, uh, best of friends and thing, you know. So I did a video on that. And I was like, hey, you know, I want to check out Serbia again. You know what I mean? See what the vibe is here and thing. I did. I do have some Serbians on on the channel here uh, that was watching when I was, uh, gosh, that was about a year ago or so. You know what I mean? But you know what? I'm babbling here. Let's go ahead on YouTube and Sim Simmer. See what I go on with this one here. Serbia is loved by its visitors due to the grey smile and huge heart of its city. Serbia is loved by its visitors due to the grey smile and huge heart of its citizens stunning nature, beautiful cities, gourmet food, and unforgettable entertainment. Serbs love Serbia due to the sense of pride that belonging to one nation gives them, due to its famous history and the belief that the whole world will one day realize all we Serbs deserve is a lot more love and understanding. This is a story of us, our country, since ancient times to the modern. All right, let's go. Vinča near Belgrade was the heart of the first European urban civilization 9,000 years ago. It was a place in which the first Serbian alphabet was created. Nowadays, the alphabet is built of 20 similar symbols of the Vincian alphabet, which opens discussions whether the current alphabet was created from the Vincian and not the Greek, which is contrary to what is being taught in schools today. Geologists have discovered materials from which the Vincians built their houses and ceramics. They were not just of regular clay, but a mixture of materials which proves they had highly developed technology. The inhabitants of Vincia were the first to melt metals and make paint out of minerals extracted from the mines on Avala Mountain. The secret of finding ores and melting metals was discovered by the Vincian culture more than 7,000 years ago. Numerous world scientists state that the Vincian culture was the most technologically advanced prehistoric culture in the world. Wow! The archaeological site Lepensky Vir in the Geopak Gorge, situated on the banks of the Danube River, was discovered exactly half a century ago. It was one of the most important discoveries of its kind due to the fact that a prehistoric culture of approximately around 8,000 years old is in question. In the region of Lipenskavir, people existed for almost 2,000 years. During that time, aside from hunters and gatherers, more organized social economic communities were developed. At the time of the excavation process, seven habitats were discovered, along with 136 objects built between six and a half thousand and five and a half thousand BC. See, you know, this is what sparked my interest in this area there, okay? This is like an untouched here, a historical gem there, where they've been like isolated from the world so far because of politics and stuff like that and you know a lot of people from the western world couldn't go there wouldn't go there with all the propaganda and stuff that's going on you know granted there was a little bit of turmoil and stuff there but that was, that's all over the world and and they went there they just didn't go to that part of the world much you didn't hear anything about that part of the world much except for all the negative stuff that that was being said about that area you know and uh now that they have opened up a little bit and people have started to study it and thing, you know what I mean? A lot of the stuff that we know we have, as we know now, could have come been contributed from there. And people from there, they don't get the recognition for contributing anything to the world. You know, the same thing would happen, would happen with Africa, certain parts of Africa, you know, certain things was invented there or thought of there, but, you know, because a bigger civilization came and, and, and took that stuff, people think it came from there. You know what I mean? So it's that's why it's important to learn about these places and stop with the 
blinded view of who they are and what they are. Let's just delve in, you understand? And this is one reason why I watch these videos, man. You know what I mean? This is one reason why, I, but from since I was a kid, I was always, because, you know, of all what I've heard about those places, I wanted to find out about those places, you know what I mean? I guess I was a sort of a, an adventurer in my own rights as a kid, you know? But let's keep going with this. This is quite interesting so far. Hope you guys are enjoying this too. Its inhabitants, as the first urbanologists and builders in that area, built houses out of wooden construction, leaves, and skins from wild animals. Located inside the homes were fireplaces, a little sacrifice place, and stone sculptures that represented their gods. Those sculptures became a recognizing symbol of Lipinskivir throughout the world and are the oldest artifacts of their kind in Europe. On the territory of present Serbia is the largest part of the front lines of the Roman Empire, an empire that managed to conquer and submit majority of the world in 53 years. Along the Danube line, on which Rome was defended for years, a few groups of cities were created which metropolizes even in the ancient times. Among these cities is Simayuna, consisting of 100,000 inhabitants. It's on the grounds of present Serbia. 16 emperors were born, two early Byzantine emperors, including Justin and Justin Yena. Oh. The most important of all the kings born in present Serbia is King Constantine the Great, who ruled from maturity until his death at 31 years of age. Both Constantine and his mother, Helena, have been proclaimed as saints by the Orthodox Church. King Constantine the Great made crucial decisions that changed the course of European history, ceasing the exile of Christians and also converting to Christianity himself, which resulted in cementing Christianity as a leading religion. He also founded a city equal to Rome, being Constantinople, nowadays known as Istanbul, providing existence of the Roman Empire in the East long after the fall of Rome and long after the Western civilized part of Rome fell. The process of the Slavs inhabiting the Balkan Peninsula began in the 6th century and lasted for 200 years. At the beginning of the 9th century, the first states of the Balkan Slavs were created. Their alphabet was the old Slavic alphabet, and their first books were liturgical. The Slavs accepted Christianity in the 9th century. The most ancient history of Serbia up until the times of Nemanjic dynasty was illustrated with constant battles between both Bulgaria and the Byzantines. At the end of the 12th century, Nemanja succeeded by offensive politics to substantially enlarge the Serbian state, strengthen his empire from Kotor up to Sofia with his capital in Rash. Nemanja's youngest son, Rasko, renamed Sava when he became a monk. He was the first Serbian archbishop, educator, and writer. As a young man, he left his father's kingdom and went to Sveta Gorge. Later on, his father joined him as a monk named Simeon, and with his help, they created the monastery at Helanda. After returning to Serbia as an abbot of the monastery, Studenica, and afterwards as the founder and first archbishop of the independent Serbian church, Sava developed a large activity to constitute and develop the church life, elevate the culture, and educate the people. Sava was proclaimed a saint after his death. The monasteries that were created by Sava's father became nurseries of literary activities. All of the monasteries are architectural monuments of distinction and beauty, with painted frescoes of which some are proclaimed amongst the highest achievements of European painting from the Middle Ages. Wow. Kosovo is Serbia. There are so many Serbian sacred things, so that it will be Serbian even after there will be not be a single Serb there. These are the words of the great poet Matija Bečković. Kosovo is the heart of Serbia and has a similar role as Jerusalem for the Jews. In Kosovo, on Vidovdan, 28th of June, 1389, not far from Pristina, the Battle of Kosovo between the Ottoman Empire and Serbian forces occurred. The Serbian forces were led by Prince Lazar, along with his allies, and the Ottomans led by Sultan Murat, with his sons Jakub and Bayezid. The Battle of Kosovo is presented as a salvation of Serbia because it emphasized the difference amongst the oppressed Orthodox and Muslim occupiers. The Kosovo battle had a large echo in Europe and temporarily succeeded to stop the Ottoman Empire expanding further in Europe. This battle for centuries after became a central motive of Serbian folk poetry and the Serbian national identity. See, see, this is what I keep trying, and a lot of, trying to keep telling a lot of people here. A lot of the stuff that, that's happening in modern day times isn't just like, oh, oh this just started happening. That's centuries of stuff that, that goes on there, history. 
There's a history of that kind of stuff there. The whole thing in Kosovo and stuff like that. Way back when. They, they, you know, the Battle of Kosovo. Way back then, you know. It's like... So people just think stuff is happening right now. That's how egotistical we are in modern times. Or... Not egotistical or ignorant enough to think that everything that's happening now just started happening. No. There's a history of the stuff that's going on there. And I have to tell people at work that all the time. You all just look at what's going on now for what your politicians tell you. Way on this side of the planet. And you don't really have an understanding of what's going on. The the, the, the things that's happened in the past. The history of it. You know what I mean? Because they, taught, they probably teach this stuff in history there. You know what I mean? So so people the people understand their history. So when they're fighting, they understand that there's something of centuries or of historical value or purpose to what's happening. No, even though there's a little bit of uh, not remembering things, but you know, it's a subconscious thing to a certain degree, I guess, if I, if I may say so. Let's keep going here. The Serbian nation lived under the Ottoman Empire for many centuries. The Turkish sultans divided the conquered states between their warriors and their properties were inhabited by Serbian villages. The people paid taxes and worked without pay. The hardest obligation of all the tax was that paid in blood. Male children were taken every fifth or seventh year to Turkey. They gave them new names, educated them in Turkish spirit and trained them to become Turkish soldiers. Some of the children did not obey by escaping into the forest, becoming rebels, and from there organizing battles and uprisings against the Turks. As the years passed, life under the Turks became harder. That kind of life led to numerous migrations of the Serbian population, the largest of which was led by the church patriarch in charge, Arsenija Charnoyevic. The region of Belgrade was under the cruelest rule by the Turkish leaders. The people decided to initiate military resistance against the rule, at the beginning of 1804, a revolt against the Ottoman Empire began. Georgia Petrovich, Kara Georgia, was chosen as the leader of this revolt. The revolt turned into an open uprising against the Ottoman Empire, known as the First Serbian Uprising. Before the end of 1806, almost the entire region of Belgrade was liberated, and the Turks had to retreat from numerous Serbian states. Serbia participated in World War I, siding with the Allied forces. Today it's well known that the Austro-Hungarian Empire initiated the war using the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, the heir to their throne, on the 28th of June in 1914 in Sarajevo as a direct cause to begin the war. He was shot by Gavrilo Princip, a member of the organization Young Bosnia, which sought liberation of Bosnia from the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The declaration of war against Serbia initiated a chain reaction amongst all the allies, resulting in a full-scale world war. The First World War, being the worst world battle of its kind, was concluded by the signing of the Treaty of Versailles on the 28th of June 1919. One of the war strategies of Serbia was uniting Serbs, Croatians and Slovenians. The declaration of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes was announced by the region Alexander Karajorjevic on the 1st of December 1918. World War II was to become the largest war conflict of all time, during which more than 50 million people were killed, approximately 1 million of those in Yugoslavia. Out of all the wars throughout history, this one was unique due to the concentration camps and extermination of entire nations. At the beginning of the war in the divided Yugoslavia, on the territory of self-proclaimed independent state of Croatia, the regime of Istashi were executed in genocide of Serbs, Jews and Gypsies. At the same time in Serbia, the first European resistance against the fascist state was formed by the Chetniks leader Draža Mihailović. A little afterwards, the communist partisans led by Josip Broz Tito also called for an uprising. The Chetniks and partisans collaborated at the beginning of the war, but due to differing ideals, a civil war started, a war characterized by the suffering of all Serbian people. The movement of the Serbian Chetniks Ravnogora was accepted by the Allies and the government in exile, but later on General Draja was accused of passive resistance of the occupiers and a never proven collaboration with the Germans by communist propaganda. After a fabricated court process held by communists against him post-war, the general was executed in July wow. in 1946, with his burial place even nowadays left unknown. His honor was later reinstated in May this year in Serbia by a court rehabilitation process with his name and war efforts liberated of the collaboration claims. 
In 1987, the US Congress put forward a bill to erect a statue of Draja Mihailovic in Washington in recognition of the 500 American pilots the general saved during the Second World War. But unfortunately, it didn't pass due to pressure from Yugoslavia. Moreover, he was awarded the Legion of Merit Award by the American President Harry Truman posthumously for his outstanding services in World War II, the highest military award that can be given to a non-American. The largest concentration camp within the territory of ex-Yugoslavia was located in Jasenovac, Croatia, on the coast of the Sava River, discovered soon after the war. It had been confirmed that approximately 700,000 civilians were executed, amongst them up to 20,000 children, simply because they were Serbs, Jews or Gypsies. Each year on the 25th of April, Australia celebrates Anzac Day. It's a national day of remembrance of the Allied heroes from Gallipoli up to the modern. The fact that from all the nations of ex-Yugoslavia, only the Serbs are permitted could be constituted acknowledgement that the Serbian nation is not a nation of conquerors and genocide. The international public has been unduly put in sense of historical fault purely on the Serbs for the fall of Yugoslavia and the bloodshed that's followed. The wars led in the last decade of the 20th century in the fall in Yugoslavia is a fact that concerns all of the nations of Yugoslavia. All in all, their historical situations are different and should be studied as such. Today in the world, the fact that it is accepted more and more is that one nation cannot be entirely blamed for the entire Balkan War within the regions of the fallen countries of Yugoslavia. Guilty are the individuals that have been proven as executors of crimes and therefore need to be punished regardless of their nationality. The ethnic cleansing that occurred during the 1990s should not be forgotten, where approximately 450,000 Serbs were also executed. Wow. However, in 1999, because of world accusations that Serbian forces were executing ethnic cleansing of the Albanians in Kosovo, Serbia once again was accused of being the guilty party alone. Without an approval of the Security Council, on the 24th of March that year, NATO commenced airstrikes against Serbia that lasted for 78 days. During the bombings, infrastructure, agricultural objects, cultural monuments, churches, media centers and monasteries were all heavily damaged. The damage sustained has been estimated from 30 up to $100 million. The final number of casualties never officially announced, but according to Serbian estimates, could be between 1,200 and 2,500 killed and more than 5,000 injured. The southern Serbian province of Kosovo has been under protection of the United Nations for the past 16 years. During that period, more than 300,000 people have been expelled from Kosovo and Matocia and more than 140 Serbian Orthodox churches and monasteries have been demolished. Fifteen of them were listed as World Heritage Sites. The Serbian nation does not stop sending messages to all that Kosovo and Matocia is a Serbian, and losing a battle in Kosovo will never be the same as losing Kosovo and Matocia as a territory. Times come and go, but our faith is strong. Serbia is a small country, but throughout centuries past it has given birth to a number of great world scientists and scholars. Nikola Tesla was the greatest Serbian genius of all. If I'm lucky enough to accomplish some of my hopes, it will be beneficial for the whole of humanity. If those hopes become reality, the sweetest thought that I will have in my mind is that all was accomplished by one Serb. These were his words. He knew that he would not be understood by his contemporaries, but one day the laws of nature and secrets he discovered would prevail. Albert Einstein, when asked how it felt to be the smartest man alive, was quoted as saying, I don't know. You'll have to ask Nikola Tesla. Wow. He died on Orthodox Christmas 1943, poor and in debt in a hotel in New York. The mayor of New York farewelled him with the following words. An inventor has left us. His work will become even greater in time to come. In the pockets of the scientists who left more than 750 protected patents and innovations was only $14. Isn't that crazy? Everybody's talking about the Tesla cars and Tesla this and Tesla that. And this man died poor, penniless. And at least he's getting some recognition, but nobody's saying where he's from. You know what I mean? I don't tell people, you know, when they come up here and they start talking about Tesla this and Tesla that, I'm going to say, you know, he was a Serbian, right? Because, you know... That's what I was talking about earlier, you know what I mean? They, they don't get the recognition, you know, because of uh, the picture that was painted of them, you know, throughout history, you know what I mean? Within the 1990s uh, uh, wars and stuff going on and all of that, you know, it's like, oh, no, they're not. How could they be smart? 
you know but they are and they they they're happy people and they, they they live their lives just like everybody else you know what i mean the best they can under the circumstances that was uh that they were put in you know what i mean well, we just look at things as political all the time and then we totally forgot the people in there and we assume because the leaders are one way that the people are the same when that's usually not the case, you know what I mean? It's like me sitting in Grenada and thinking that all Americans are, are love the government and stuff, which is not true, you know what I mean? And even in times when there wasn't any turmoil, people still are not going to like their government. Same thing where I'm from, same thing in Jamaica, same thing in Japan. So you know what I mean? Everybody's going to have an issue or somebody's going to have an issue with the government, you know? So we can't just blanket and say they're all are one way, you know what I mean? Numerous paintings of the Serbian scientist and patriot Mihailo Pupin, who was one of the 400 most influential citizens of America in his time, even nowadays are utilized in the areas of electronics and telecommunications. His most renowned invention was greatly extending the range of long distance telephone communication by way of loading what? coils for which he won the greatest American acknowledgement for inventors, Edison's Golden Medal. He was also a founding member of the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, which today is known as NASA. Militin Milankovic was a world-known geophysicist, climatologist, astronomer, and founder of the Department of Celestial Mechanics at the University of Belgrade. His reforms of the Gregorian and Julian calendar were accepted in Chadigrad in 1923. Moreover, he had created the most precise calendar to date. Not until the development of the quartz and atomic clocks, his theory that the period of the Earth's rotation was inconsistent, was proven and ultimately quantified. Mihailo Petrovich Alas and Mileva Maric Einstein were world famous mathematicians applying their knowledge in areas of technology and innovations. In all cases, scientists with a Serbian background and heritage never forgot their roots. The untouched beauties of Serbia are truly pearls for admirers of nature. Serbia offers many challenges with its high mountain ranges, spacious plains, forest expanses, and stunning caves. It is an ideal place for people with an adventurous spirit. Wow. Some plants and animal species that have already vanished from the rest of Europe still survive in the dense forests and rich hills oh. of Serbia. Kopaunik, with 1,500 different types of plants, is the roof of Serbia, but is also the most famous Serbian ski resort. Vernička Banja is the queen of continental tourism and during the 30s had double the amount of tourists from Dubrovnik. The national parks Tara, Fruška Gora and Jerda each year attract larger numbers of tourists flocking to the Serbian mineral springs which are well known across the whole of Europe. It's no wonder that Robert De Niro throughout his travels in Serbia fell in love with the Serbian nation and gave his daughter the name Drina which is a wonderful river streaming through the heart of Serbia. In Serbia, sport is of great significance. Moreover, people identify themselves with the successes of the athletes and their victories. The most popular sports in Serbia are soccer, water polo, volleyball, handball, athletics, and in the past few years, tennis. As successes of the state alliance of Serbia and Montenegro, the basketball team of Serbia won two gold medals on the world championships in 1998 and 2002, as well as a silver medal in 2014. The male basketball team won silver medal at the 1996 Olympics. This year, the female basketball team won the European gold medal. Dražen Dalipagic, Dragan Kachanovic, Vlada Divac, Alexander Djordjevic, Predrag Danilovic, Predrag Stojakovic, and Miloš Teodosic have been declared the best players in Europe on many occasions. Traditionally, best Serbian football teams are Red Star and Partizan, and the games between these two clubs are called an eternal derby. The greatest success of club football in Serbia occurred in 1991 when Red Star won the UEFA Champions Cup and the Intercontinental Cup. This year in the World Championships in New Zealand, Serbia became the under-20s world champions, defeating Brazil. Serbia's male volleyball team won gold at the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, bronze at the Olympics in 1996, and silver at the 1998 World Championships. Water polo is one of the most prized sports in Serbia at all. The senior men's team have won the world championships four times and the water polo players of Partizan have been European club champions seven times. This year, they became world champions again. The male tennis team won the Davis Cup in 2010 and in 2013 were runners-up. 
On the other hand, the female team got in the finals of the Federation Cup in 2012. Most successful female tennis players of Serbia are Anna Ivanovic and Jelena Jankovic. Both of them were first on the world ATP rankings list and have won 28 titles in singles competition between them. Wow. The most successful Serbian male tennis player in the world, number one, is Novak Djokovic, who's won 11 Grand Slam tournaments. Know him. He holds the record for five trophies won at the Australian Open alone. Djokovic has more than 40 individual titles and is the only Serbian sportsman that's been declared the best athlete in the world. Other great male players include Viktor Trojski, Bianco Tipsarovic, Nenad Zemanovic, and the up-and-coming Dusan Lajevic. It is said that each memory is like a shoulder that slips each time you try to support yourself on it. Serbia is a shoulder on which each one of us can came. That is why the love and memories of this country are so beautiful. Man, this was a really, really, really good documentary. This was really good. They covered everything pretty much. Well, you know, they covered as much as they can with the time that they have. But, you know, you come up with a, an understanding of the Serbian culture and, and, and the, the, Soviet, the history of Serbia and even cultural stuff and thing. You know what I mean? Like in sports and everything. Man. The inventors, uh, academics, you know, you came out with everything there. I enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I'll leave a link to this uh, video in the description so you could go check it out and thing, you know what I mean? And I'll also leave other links to videos that I reacted to on Serbia. You understand what I'm saying? I enjoyed this. Y'all comment down below. Tell me more stuff. Tell me more stuff. My Serbian peeps that's on here. And even uh, my Rom Rom Romanian peeps who know stuff about Serbia since you're all of our family. Comment down below and let me know what you know, you know, tell me what the vibe is and thing. My next video I want to do is I want to I check out Serbian food and see what it is, you know, it might be similar. To, I already got some, uh, uh, some comments in the video that I did, that I put up uh, actually today, Saturday, that I put up, uh, that some of the foods are similar. Hook me up. Tell me what you all got. That's that's uh, exclusive to you all, you know what I mean? And I'll check out the video on it. Hope you guys had fun watching this with me. You all take care of each other, alright? Cool runnings.